In episode 345, we go through some changes that are coming to the FAFSA form. Stick around. Welcome to the Maluli Asset Show. I'm your host, Tom Maluli, and this is episode number 345. Thanks for tuning in. The FAFSA form, if you've got a college student, you know what I'm talking about. This is the free financial aid form, the application that we've all had to fill out if we've had kids that have gone through higher education. Well, there's some changes that are coming to the, form, uh, to the form itself and some of the methodologies that they're using. I wanna walk through some of them right now. The first thing you need to know is that typically this form is available and you can begin filling it out October 1st. Uh-uh, not this year. It won't be available until December. Knowing the government, it'll probably be later than that but stick around, be patient with this thing because the Department of Education has said that this is going to be the most ambitious and significant redesign of the FAFSA, the form itself, in decades. So stay tuned, get your popcorn ready. The goal of the, of the redesign of the FAFSA form was to make it simpler to fill out. There, on the old form, there was 108 questions that needed to be answered. They're slimming it down to something less than 50 questions. The thing that I discovered when I had to fill out the FAFSA form years ago was that when you went back in the second year and the third year and the fourth year, most of the information was just carried forward from previous years. So really the, the learning curve, the time spent is in year one if you haven't done a FAFSA form. The first year is the hardest one. It gets much easier after that. The term expected family contribution, that phrase is going away. It's now called the student aid index. Uh, no reason given for that. Uh, sounds good. Uh, I don't really understand why they needed to change that. Something else that I, uh, that I saw in the upcoming changes that may sit, uh, may not work well with some folks, the, there used to be a discount that families would get if you had more than one student in college at the same time. That is being eliminated you can thank Senator Lamar Alexander, who argued that uh, giving a discount to families with more than one student wasn't fair to the families that had only one student in school at the time. That's your government at work for you. Also, if you're a small business owner, you used to be able to not count the assets that were part of your small business in the math uh, to come up with your expected family contribution. That part is being eliminated. And so if you own a small business, your assets are now going to be included in the math. Also, child support, this may be the only place in the world where income from child support is no longer reported as income, it's reported as an asset. Now the reason for that, it sounds kooky, but the reason for that is assets uh, count less towards your student aid index or what we used to call the expected family contribution, assets uh, factor less than income. So there are some changes that are going to affect some people with the FAFSA. The most important one is that it's not gonna be ready on October 1st. Stick around. If you've got questions about things like college aid and FAFSA, be ready to talk to you about that. That's the message for episode 345. Thanks again for tuning in.